Mrs. Regan, isn't that Mr. Bronson's car? Morning. It's Morris's car. Probably worth more to him, Miss Scrap. I think someone should take him. Janet, nip upstairs. Tell Mr. Bronson's abandoned car's in danger, will you? Yes, sir. Who knows what time he must have got in. Come in. <coughs> May I have a word with you, Mrs. McCluskey? Yes, Mr. Griffiths. I do hope the arrival of these classrooms will help to alleviate some of the problems we've been experiencing lately. <laughs> with due respect, it would take a lot more than that to sort out the behaviour of half the kids here. Uh, no, it's not the classrooms of any description what is of concern. It's uh, the... Uh, the goings-on in the toilets. I can assure you, your diligence has not gone unnoticed. Oh, that's very kind of you to say so, I'm sure. But the girls' lavatories are not really your concern. Oh, no, of course not, Mrs. Petoskey. However, I am glad you've come to see me, huh? because I did want to ask for your cooperation on another matter. Oh. Unfortunately, it would appear that the asbestos problem is much worse than was originally anticipated, and the old school building will not be fully operational for some time. Oh, God help us. Which will mean the arrival of yet more temporary classrooms. Oh, no, that's just asking for it. Bedlam, bedlam will break loose. I sincerely hope not. In fact, it's our job to make sure it doesn't. What do these staff think? They don't know about it yet. You're the first person I've told. Oh, thank you very much, Mrs. McCluskey. I can assure you of a 100% cooperation of myself and my staff. Good. Come on, come on, it's not the eighth wonder of the world. Half you shouldn't be here at all, get back to your own playgrounds. Come on! What are you looking for? Mads Davis. Oh, what do you look for? I don't, but I can't see her. It's a bit worried about that. She grew up in that crane and to drop those things in the school. That would be doing too many of us a favour. Knowing her, she'd wait to us all in here. Pupils are not permitted to come to the staff room before school. Go away. But Mr. Bronson. Oh, St. Clair. Is something the matter? Mr. Bronson, Mr. Bassett told me to tell you about your car. Did he indeed? Well, I'm sure there was no need to involve you. But kindly tell Mr. Baxter from me that the policy of the staff car park is first come First served. Not that, sir. Your car's about to be squashed by a temporary classroom. Good grief. Out of my way. Look at that. I'm straight my neck looking. The poster's not facing the crane. It's a woman. Oh, give over. Please, take a good look. We must have good eyesight. All I can see is a yellow blob. That's a safety helmet. Anyway, they wouldn't let a woman in there. They have to. It's discrimination advice. Blimey. When did he get a job like that? Listen, how long are you going to be? Well, there's not a lot anyone can do until that car's removed. And you're a woman? Yeah. What are you? Biology teacher? No, no, sport as a matter of fact. What is it they say? <laughs> those who can do and those who can't teach. Stop! Train driver! Hold the proceedings, my good man! I have to move my car! Well, get a move on then, Colonel. You're holding us all up. You're a woman. Ten out of ten. What's he going to do? Put me on the nature table. You want to be picked up by a woman crane driver, do you, Morris? <laughs> Told you, didn't I? I saw a woman bus driver once. Imelda's missed it all, then. <laughs> right. Does anyone know where Robbie Wright is? Or any grease for that matter. No? They should be here. Tell them to come and see me when they eventually turn up. <coughs> Hurry up, Imelda. Sorry. It's a busy Eric, isn't he? Because his reply from the palace has arrived. Yeah? What's that? Good job mucking out the corgis, has he? <laughs> Should poison them off. Someone woke up in a good mood again. Well, we'll all have to be kept in suspense until tomorrow. I could take it round to his flat, sir. Well, it's very good of you, Luke, but I think it's better if he can collect it for himself. Yeah, but if he's ill, I can take it round at lunchtime. It's no trouble. Creep. 
Like wasting my lunch hour around there. You know how things get lost in a register, sir? All right, then. But make sure he gets it. Thanks, Lou. You're such a jerk. Yeah? Sit down, Gardner. Ah. Oh. Good afternoon, right? I thought you'd been buried under a portable classroom. Go on, sit down. Vince! Hand these letters around, will you? I notice you haven't had a reply yet. Who'd you write to? Do you write to anyone at all? He needs to write to Claire Rayner. Please, thank you. That's enough, Imelda. I notice you've got a letter back from Rentakill. So. Oh, sorry, Miss Odin, so you Obviously. Where are you off to in such a hurry? The bell hasn't even gone yet. Uh, where's that early? On be first says dinner queue, Miss. Do you not ever stop thinking about your intake? Huh? Food, Sammy, food. Do you ever think about anything else? Still, it means you'll be finished early. You can come out and lose some desk. I'll try. I don't think why we should have to be roped into being removed from me. Oh, my. This person's trying to be for the fault of the issues. You reckon? You wait and see. 